Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about the uh, SKIP system, social concrete insulated panels. Uh, my name is Ismael Vasquez. I'm the technical sales manager for Carmelo and also for the structural panels TCT. Um, uh, our company, uh, Structural Panel DCT, is located in uh, Long Beach, Mississippi. Uh, GCT, GCT stands for Gulf Concrete Technology. That's where we manufacture the panels. And we also manufacture there the uh, the mortars, structural mortars, and also the finished mortars, as, as well as other material or some of the products we make there. And we also have a, a mortar plant in Puerto Rico, and that's where our main offices are. And we have our engineering offices there as well. We also have labs in, uh, in Mississippi and also in Puerto Rico. Uh, so, um, so let's get going. Uh, I was waiting for Scott Miller, uh, but I think he has a situation today, but I'll be uh, leading this uh, meeting today. Uh, also on the line, we have uh, engineer Victor Camacho. He's our vice president for sales and operation. Uh, so in any questions that I won't be able to uh, answer, he can also help out as well. So let's get going. Um, uh, our, our company has been in the business since uh, 2010 with the uh, with the skip system, and uh, but this technology has been out there uh, and started all in, in Italy back there in Europe uh, over 40 years ago. And uh, right now we have a lot of projects all around the world. And uh, so so with our plant and since 2010, we have been doing a lot of projects in Florida to up to uh, California, Puerto Rico and the Caribbean as well. Uh, and uh, the good thing is, uh, you know, our system has resisted a lot of hurricanes. Uh, even uh, Hurricane Maria, we're here in Puerto Rico back in 2017, we had structures already built. And in that side of the island, uh, you know, we, we resisted a, a lot of wind over 200 miles per hour and uh, those uh, buildings are still there um our system again is uh is uh, is the uh only skip technology out there uh, where where it meets you know the building code uh for the u.s and also for, for puerto rico um and one of the neat things it has for this system is that uh, it has the uh our value installation we go from 12 to let's say uh 36 uh, R value. So, so the higher the R value, the, the cooler that building is going to be. Um, so we, we comply with the building code, uh, the Florida building code as well. Um, we, and we have a technical evaluation report that we can send out to the designers or and let's say our engineers and architects who want to design with this system. Uh, we have that manual and digital and we can, if you send us your email, we can, we can provide you one as well. Um, this, this is our second, uh, let's talk about SKIP. Uh, so we did talk a little bit in uh, more detail on the technical evaluation report. Uh, so today, we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna speak a little bit more about how, how do we construct these uh, these buildings, right? With how do we put them together? Um, and um, again, we, we we comply with with many testings. Uh, we did a lot of testing for hurricanes, uh, for se seismic uh, event uh, up there in, in the states as well. We took it took it to the to the labs uh, with DRJ, and um, and so so we 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 put all those uh, testing together, and we comply with the international building code for the residential code as well. So we we have done uh, residential, commercial, industrial buildings. You can use these system in, and, uh, and the great thing is so far so good, right? We have not seen any any damages uh, to these buildings after her uh, uh, uh right now, and uh, and again the, because uh, these these systems are lighter than uh, let's say uh, regular structures, like you can say up to forty percent lighter. Um, and so, and again, they're, they're more environmental friendly because again, you, you, you have less, uh, uh, let's say time, uh, working with, with the building. Uh, so you can, you can really construct this real easy and, and fast, right? So 
on the on the left side here is is these that would be our panels, right? How how it would look, and uh, and again you, you can see how how things are reinforced between the walls and and also the uh, the roof and how we connect. We do those connections, but but again we first start with a foundation, right? A, a regular concrete foundation, and then we use our dowels to uh, to uh, if they join the, those those walls, and, and then we have connections of L, L shapes uh, and meshes to, to to do those connections. So, so your building is going to look like the one in the right, just a regular concrete building. Um, and and again, it has you can do different finishes. Uh, let's say uh, like stucco or mortar is or and uh, there's, there's different different types of finishes you can do uh, on these buildings as well. So, so again, this uh, this uh, construction is going to be real fast. I mean, uh, um, you, in between two people, you know, you 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 can carry these panels. You don't you don't need any like trains. Uh, but you know, we we have we uh, recent, but in recently, let's say we we've seen that people also want to do it uh, precast as well. You can use forms with it as well, and. Uh, and you can also do precast, uh, uh, let's say members with with these uh, with these panels as well. So you so we can do precast, we we can do cast in place, or you just can go to the our traditional, uh, putting the, the the panels first and then spraying the uh, the mortar on it. Okay, so so again we, we say this is less labor intensive because uh, if you if you let's say you use <clears throat> you you can put. Uh, let's say these, these panels like in, in 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 a minute. I mean these these panels come in four feet by let's say eight feet to twenty feet high, and, and they weigh let's say about a pound. So so between two people, they they can carry it and and uh, place it on on that on that floor. So so again, this this provides a very safe area where you don't need heavy equipment, um, and. Uh, and you can and you can also place a lot of square footage. I mean, by the time you you got two people putting, let's say, three hundred blocks, we that would be like two hundred sixty five square foot. We can put, let's say, a thousand to two thousand square foot of this material. And that's that's the advantages of that doing that. So again, you know, what's what's the difference between the traditional to the to these panels? That again, this this uh, these panels are very light to. To carry and, uh, and also uh, they have this in already insul insulated uh, foam that uh, you just place and then you have that that steel which is galvanized steel high high tension about 95 ksi and uh, you already have that there from the from the factory and then you can carry it. I mean, usually we we want to we want to put one panel at a time, not three like like the, 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 we see here in, in the uh, let's see on on the screen here. And then you can also do it with different forms. We 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 have done it done rounded rounded shapes, square shapes. Uh, so they 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 can be bent as well on on the field, and uh, so you can do different shapes there as well. These 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 structure are in the let's say on the uh, let's say southeast side of Puerto Rico. This is where the Maria entered with almost two hundred miles per hour wind, and they are still intact there. Uh, as, as you see them. So how, so the first thing you have to do is you have to do your, your concrete foundation. You have to order your, your concrete from your, your local ready mix producer. But first you 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 do your 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 foundations, uh, you, you open you open up the soil, you put your polyethylene right to protect your your steel for, from moisture as well and also your, your slab. That's very important. Right, and then you lay you lay your your rebar. You can also put your um, your rebars are are going the rods are going up as well uh, from from that from that uh, foundation slab, or you can later on uh, let's say uh, let, let me enter somebody here. Um, then you can later on uh, let's say uh, drill, drill a hole and, and put those rod in. So, so it all, it all depends what and the engineer wants to do, right? But we prefer to do to do the the later, right? To 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 do, let's say, the, the drilling of the hole, put it, put the epoxy, and then the rebar. 
so that you, then you can you have straight straighter, let's say, rebars going up. But we'll go into details now on this. Um, these rebars here, here on the right, you're going to see your your foundation here, and probably the the engineer is going to have that from the, from the bottom of the foundation going up. Usually, these these stick up uh, uh, 18 inches over the uh, over the slab, and um, but like what we say is that you you can drill the holes later on and then stick the the rebar down whatever inches right the epoxy uh, uh permits right and um then you you stagger the the rebar every uh, let's say uh eight inches or you separate them on each side eight every 16 inches right uh, so so each side have, will have uh, a line of uh V bar every every sixteen inches, so that's that's where you're going to place the uh, the panel that comes in four feet by the height of the wall, and and you're already going to have your mesh. Then you, like, like in this like in this uh, uh, in this area here on on the left, you got to make sure that, that your finishes uh, comply with where you're going to put your panel. Okay, keep on here. Uh, and, and mainly, I mean, our testing were done with uh, three eighths of an inch uh, or uh, rebars, number three rebars. So, so that that can be used, or you can use half inch rebars here on on, on to anchor the uh, the panels. Okay. Here are some examples of the uh, foundations where where the, this would be in the middle of the wall. So you do your your regular calculation design. So how much how much uh, actual wall you want to have that in that wall. Right, so you design your your foundations with that, and then also if you're on the edge, then you also design your rebar for that for that foundation. Okay, that's just some examples there. So the first thing you do is you you mark where you're going to put the, your walls. Okay, with the chalk line, and, um, and then you you uh, drill the hole every every sixteen every sixteen. Uh, uh, inches apart, uh, and then you're going to make two lines staggered, right? Every every, they're they're going to be staggered in these these uh, rebars every eight inches, but then then they're going to be spaced out every every sixteen inches, like you see here. Okay. So more, more closer view here. We're going to have probably a, a door. So you 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 already mark mark the where where you want to put the uh, the edge of that. Uh, uh, let's say of uh, that panel, uh, like like the PSM eighty is like a four inch, uh, from rebar to rebar. So that, so that means that you have to mark them at, at four inches spaced out, right? For the 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 rebars one uh, from one side to the other, okay. If that's the size of the panel, but they but but these panels come from up from from ten inches to up. From four inches to up to ten inches, from wire to wire. Okay. And again, either either you 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 already have your your rebars so all already set from your foundation, or you can drill them, as we prefer in, in our company to drill them afterwards, because then you can finish your your concrete with no problems with not, with any rebar going up. And also, if there's a problem with with the pipes where where they were located, let's say water pipes or, or any other pipe you can also move that wall and and uh and place it where where that pipe will be in the center okay so so once you you place your your panel you you have to let's say melt around the uh the rebar and make sure you have like an inch uh you, we use a heat gun for that but you also want that rebar to be uh tied up with a tie wire um you know, to the mesh so but but that that what that the rebar is going to be inside the the uh, the in the inside the the mesh okay we, we don't want them outside the mesh okay because that's the way they were tested in our in the field in the uh, in the lab so there, there are different ways to put these i mean the best way to start is by by starting in a, in a corner Right, you have your four feet uh, panel, and then you you be joining them uh, one by one. One has a, a let's say a, a two two square flat 
where where they're going to be joining uh, each other, and then that's where you, where you're going to put the uh, the clips uh, on them to join them. Okay, so so you can start in, uh, let's say a room, and where where it, it intersects, you'll finish that that room, right? That's one way to do it, or you can do a whole a whole uh, wall and completely come come and turn around and 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 do that other wall as well. Um, but the main thing is you you brace uh, the the wall so that it, it doesn't uh, uh, keep keep banging around with with the wind and and uh, it, it's also sturdier as well. So you see here you, they 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 square. The, the the room and uh, so so now you have a sturdier let's say uh construction so so again the second way to do it is again you can do one wall then we then just use one panel and then you just continue and then finish the other wall and then you have a sturdier let's say wall to to hold on okay well wow before you start uh using all the clips and angles Angular meshes as well, and all the corner meshes. Okay, so how do we cut these uh, panels? Uh, one way to do it is, is you can use these pliers. Um, you know, I think that's one of the easiest way. They they really cut well uh, the, the wire. I mean, this is this is a high tensile strength galvanized steel, which is ninety five psi, and it's and if you use let's say a uh, uh, our carbide or, or diamond disc it's gonna it's gonna be a little bit slower and it's gonna take up more more let's say disc on it but I've seen people out there in the field also using the disc with it but I think we with, with the clip you can do a, a, a better job as well so once once you mark it and then you start cutting those uh, that wire then you can come in with your your regular floor or minor store and uh, and uh, you cut the foam on there so you can cut uh, let's say the windows or the, the openings or if you just need uh, certain, uh, a, a certain length then then just cut that and then then you just take it over to to the uh, the building and just place it here these guys are very aggressive they took three panels and you can see how how light it is but uh, again we, we like to put one panel at a time and then and then uh, secure them on, uh, in place Okay. Here you, you can see how they're joining uh, uh, and securing the the panel so that they they don't start moving. Okay. And this is how you want to brace them, right? Um, so also, we we want this very plumbed, right? Uh, Ninety degrees. Uh, so you can use, either use wood or lolly columns like these, steel, right? And again, we, we want to do this because in one side of, 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 of the, the other side of that of that building, we're going to start putting mortar. So we want we want that uh, that building to be sturdy, right? So it doesn't move on you. Right? So again, this is this is how we we put the bracing. We secure it uh, to the to the slab, and and again, we want a very plumbed, a ninety degrees uh, wall. Because again, if you don't have a ninety degrees wall. Then you're going to use more mortar, uh, finishing mortar to uh, to finish, to make to make that wall straight. So that's why we want that that 90 degree wall with with the floor, right? So you use a plumb or a level to do that. And whenever you're securing these uh, these um, the the wood, right? You you want to you want to pass it all the way around that that's to the other steel, right? Not 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 to grab the first steel, but to all the way through the the wall, and then to the second steel, you want to you want to hold out that bracing. Okay. Sorry, I'm going back here. Okay. So these are the uh, the, the the clip machines that, that are used. Um, we prefer the ones that are nomadic, like the one here on the right, because uh, uses uh, let's say a ninety psi compressor with air, and uh, it's going to go real fast. So every two square, we're securing the uh, the walls, right? Or let's say the the, the 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 roof slabs as well. Okay. And again, these are, are, are galvanized clips. And so, 
So it's easier to use, let's say, the uh, pneumatic guns than than the handgun. I mean, probably a, a per, if you give a, a handgun to to somebody like that, uh, he, he'll probably last only one hour. Uh, but with with the pneumatic gun, you're going to go faster, and it's going to be easier for the, for the application. So here we're we're explaining uh, how we join the building with, with these uh, corner mesh, flat mesh, and U mesh. So the uh, so the this this one here on on the top left here is our corner mesh. They they come in seven inch by seven inches, and they also come for the the exterior of of, of the uh, corner. So so the seven inch by seven inch, we put it in the interior of the corners, and and uh, or let's say in, in that corner of the wall, and then the uh, the seven by twelve, we put it on the exterior. And I'll show you why why we do that because we want we want to pass, uh, let's say where we have joints, um, and we make sure that we have two squares to to lock that 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 uh, that mesh out. And also we have the U mesh. These U meshes are used around the perimeter of the windows and doors. Okay, that's where you're going to use them. And um, we also have flat mesh that that are like uh, 15 inches by four feet long. And uh, you know also we have four by four foot uh, meshes and also eight by four foot meshes. And I'll show you how where we use those as well. So. So the angular meshes here, if you're joining, let's say walls and, and roof, you, you're gonna you're gonna be using the corner wall seven inches by seven inches, right? The corner mesh. And uh also you'll be probably using a flat mesh and then if you're joining another uh, flat, uh wall flap on the top here, that's where you would use a flat mesh. Okay. So again, if this is a floor slab, you have you're using your corner mesh underneath. Then, then also, uh, let's say if this is a floor slab and, and a wall slab, uh, this would be your interior corner, and this would be your exterior. Here, here you can see the joint is that I was talking to you about. So you needed the longer face here, the twelve-inch face of that uh, angle angle uh, to be in that side. Okay. And this is how, how we would see, a, let's say, a, a typical roof. Uh, sometimes you, you have slopes, sometimes you don't have slopes. But you can design them uh, either or. Okay. So how do we reinforce, let's say, uh, uh, the perimeters of, of the uh, windows and doors? So we use these flat mesh and we, we cut the, the, the pieces, let's say they, they, they come at 15 inches by four feet. We cut them in four, right? And right in half. So we have four pieces. So so every every, every flat mesh will, will be will cover one side. So for each window, you you'll need two two flat meshes that are four 15 feet by 15 inches by four feet. And uh whenever you, you're doing your 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 uh frame, right for the for the window or let's say the door, uh we, we ask that you 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 measure uh you you have four inch more of of distance so that you for that for that edge so it, so you can cover that the edge of, of the window with warm water let's say two inches or let's say from three to two two inches or or one in, or or one inch and a half on each side right so that's why we say we need four inch more uh, of spacing so that so, so that whenever you put your window and you use your screws, you have more, let's say, structural mortar to, to attach that window to, okay? And uh, the, this, this would be our, our, our PSG3 slab. They're usually the PSGs are used on, on the roof. Whenever you, you want distance from, let's say, 12 feet to 32 feet, right? Um, and... Um, they come in with uh, this is a PSG three because they have three girders here one two three girders and we here you deposit two two uh, uh, number four uh, rebar there on the bottom and you also have to uh, uh, make sure it's it's not touching to the uh, let's say the foam right so you 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 have to put something underneath it as well and. Um, so, so your 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 roof is going to have uh, three quarters of an inch over the mesh uh, with structural mortar, 
And then on the top of the roof, you're going to have regular uh, 3,500 PSI concrete. And that, that, that concrete is going to have uh, fibers. And uh, the uh, let's say the aggregate is going to be like a, a half an inch down, right? So you, you, don't, you, don't want, you, don't, you don't want, you just want half inch down uh, of that or smaller, let's say, uh, of that aggregate. So, so these these girders will, will vary from depending on the size, right? Uh, again, you, you have a, a PSG 100 to, to PSG 200, 240. Those are millimeters, right? Uh, 100 millimeters to 240 millimeters, right? Okay. So, so again, these these are these are used uh, in in roof. You can also use the PSM, but but again, the designer has to decide on the thickness uh, and and what and what uh, let's say pounds per square foot uh, that that uh, uh, PSM uh, panels will will resist or not, or or the span as well. And uh, you have between rooms, um, so there you have to select either a PSM or a PSG depending on this on that span. So there, again, if the span is up between 14 to 32 feet, you'll probably be using a PSG 2 or a 3 or a 6. So they, these come in either two, you, know, you either have two girders, three girders, or six girders in, in four feet. Okay. And how do you, how do you tie those uh, PSG to, to the edges? We, we call this a bond beam. Okay. And then you put it in L shape. Here on, on with with your rebar and, and the rings uh, spaced every every so often there'll, there'll be a three eighth inch uh, rings with with probably half inch rebars going through here um, and uh, and and then wherever your girder was you're going to have those uh, <clears throat> outstates going in right and then when you pour your concrete everything is just going to be joined there with that with that uh, with, with that slab okay. So here, here's a picture of how that looks. Here, here they they added, let's say, uh, cantilever about about two feet, uh, you know, uh, exp over the wall, right? And uh, so you have here your 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 uh, you're, you're practically doing a let's say a beam here, um, and uh, so you're reinforcing this. Here, here you're you're adding additional. A negative rebar so that you can have, let's say, uh, an extension after your your wall. Let's say a cantilever there, and that that would be your negative rebar there. And uh, just to get an idea of how, how these uh, structures are designed and, and they and they look, right? So here, uh, let's see, you, you can here you can see how in the center you're going to have higher, let's say, thickness of concrete. And then uh, to the edge, it's, it's going to be two inches minimum. Okay. So 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 probably in the center would be like five to six inches of concrete, right, right there in the center. So so that's to make sure that you have a slopey, let's say, uh, concrete, and then then you don't have any pounding water. And I brought these pictures because uh, you can also join steel frames, uh, big columns, beams, uh, joists as well, and 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 also. Uh, uh, a complement with 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 the panels. Uh, let's say if you have you have a spacing about forty feet, and our and our panel just gets to uh, thirty two feet. So you need to add additional beams and columns. You know, depending, you can also add those those beams and columns with either concrete, or you can use additional panels uh, or our our panels to do it. Those columns or 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 beams. You know, like here on on the center, and you can see this. This is a beam right here. They how they how they they shifted the, the panel to the side, and you, you can use it as a beam, okay? But again, you can integrate steel, uh, steel beams and columns. You can use the steel beams and, and concrete. Here, here is also the, the, an idea of the design, how they did it here with, with, a, with, a, with the uh, rebars and, uh, and also the joints. Again, these uh, these these uh, panels are. You see how how long they are. They are very uh, light. I mean, they're very light to carry. And and all you need is just panels. You know, you don't really need additional beams or columns in there or additional rebar. All depends on again of, of your design and how the structural engineer 
sees it as well. And whatever he says on, on that uh, blueprint or or specification, that's that's the way it's going to go, right? But again, you can do structures up to four story high with with just these panels. Okay, this is showing how we how we uh, do the supports uh, whenever we're putting the let's say the panels on the roof. So every every four feet, we're we're putting a uh, uh, a two by four or four by four, uh, so that we can use the say lolly columns, or we can also use wood to to hold them. But again, if you have a uh, this is your your long side of, of the panel, then you go to, you have to uh, put these bracing traverse uh, transverse uh, to to the or perpendicular to 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 the length of that of that panel. Okay, and uh, we usually start like two feet from the from the walls, and then every four feet, you you put one of these, uh, 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 let's say, uh, bracing or supports. And here we're we're showing from from top to left to bottom right. Um, this is how how we're we're spraying the the mortar inside of the building, right? You you first put your first pour of uh, of, of mortar. You can also be shifting these uh, these to the side, so you could, can cover uh, the, the area that you didn't that you missed when you when you were spraying on that first on the, on that first let's say spray of that mortar. Okay, so you can move them, right? and and this is done before we we uh, let's say pour any concrete on the top. So we don't we don't want any weight yet on on that on that slab. So how do we put our plumbing and electric on these panels? And first of all, we, we use a heat gun and we melt for, for where we're gonna put our, our electrical boxes and, and our pipes. Um, and um, and then, then once you have that that opening, right, you, you put your uh, either, this could be a PVC pipes or flexible pipes. Um, and, um, uh, that, that that's that's the way we want them. We, we, if you if you're using copper, you have to put uh, a sleeve of, of let's say a, of, uh, of of a plastic pipe over it because again you don't want want that that copper to to uh, join with the uh, with the other metals in in this wall. Okay. Yeah. While while we have in this picture, this is how we frame the the uh, let's say the the doors. Okay. So you you have that. Remember that four inches, uh, or let's say two inches on each side. Uh, that's, this is where we want more structural mortar going in. So when, once you have this uh, framed up you, and, and you spray your mortar, then you'll, you'll have that finished, uh, uh, let's say, door or window edges, okay? So these are our several heat guns that are out there. You can either buy a cheaper one that costs 40 bucks or, or an, a brand uh, made, uh, uh, let's say, heat gun, which may cost uh, 80 bucks. But again, uh, the main thing is they they, they they have like 500 to 1,000 degrees uh, so that they can melt uh, that, that the foam. And we, and we again, we prefer a, a, a heat gun like that instead of, uh, let's say, a uh, 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 torch, because the, the torch will, will uh, Will burn through the the foam and probably take more more of that foam that you want. So we only all we need is just at least an inch around that either the pipes or or let's say the rebars or whatever. You don't want anything touching the foam except uh, the mortar. Okay, that's that's why we want we want uh, to separate with with that heat gun and, and all the pipes and um, or or steel and and uh, that that is out there. So here, the, here's a detail here where they put some structural mortar around the boxes, and that's where wherever you need to level that that box so that you have that finishing wall. That's where you have to place that 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 box, and and, and you can do that first with the structural mortar and put it in place first uh, before you start. Right here, right. Uh, so. So once you have all your piping and and everything and all the all all the angular meshes put and all your U mesh put, then you're you're ready to let's say put some mortar. And what we do, we, we put some guides every three to four feet, right? Uh, these these would be uh, PVC pipes, half inch pipes, 
Um, and uh, th these will be over, let's say, the, uh, the steel mesh. And our specification require that you have like at least three quarters of an inch of structural mortar or that steel, okay? So, so, so the average between the foam and, and the outside of that mortar will be at least a, about an inch and a half almost, okay? Um, so, so again, you, 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 you separate those, uh, those pipes every, every, let's say four, four and a half feet, maybe, or three, depending on your street, how long you have your street and how, how long, how high you want to, want to put them. And, and that way you have, you, you make sure that you have that three, three quarters inch covered. So, and, 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 and then you can, for the walls inside and out, you, you can just do that, the mortar in just one spot. Okay, and then you just have that finished. Okay. So here you, you can see a photo of how how that looks. So get like like let's say every four feet, and then you come in with your street, and you and you fill everything up from your foam all the way up to uh, where the edge of that uh, uh, screen, uh, let's say pipe is. Okay, so that's where you're going to have the three quarters inch over the structural mortar. And again, you you uh, once once you start spraying, then you're going to be doing let's say lines from left to right, um, so that you have a mechanical bond, so that when you're ready to let's say put a finished product on there, like uh, three quarters of an inch finished mortar, it's, you don't need any bonding agent. Or if you're using let's say a, a synthetic stucco over a structural uh, mortar, you can also do that. Or if you're using a, another f a finishing like aluminum siding, then you just leave it like that and just cover the building with it. Okay. So, so you can also do the spray. Again, here you, you can see a picture of how that looks. Uh, you start. You, you can you, you can do like a skim coat first over the over the foam, and then you just build up up to the mesh. And then once that that's ready, you can uh, put your guides and then cover the three quarters of an inch uh, mortar. Okay. So here's here's step by step how they did it. Right. So they started their mortar on the outside. They, they they started you know finishing uh the, the structural mortar and they, they left the, the lines there from left to right with a uh, with a quarter inch by quarter inch trowel. Then they came in with a finished mortar and they finished it. And so they they come you see the final product right with nice and beautiful painted and nice nice and square. And these are the products that we manufacture. Uh we have the the structural mortar 4000, that's the, that's the first mortar that you're going to be applying. And then we also have this, uh, the, 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 uh, the type end where, um, that one's for just for finishing. You can use the up to, let's say, a three, three eighths of an inch, half inch, depending on how, how good you squared out that, that, uh, wall, right? Or again, you can do either use other uh, finishes as well. So, so to review that, right? So again, we need to cover over the mesh three quarters of an inch of, of structural mortar, right? Now again, we, we're going to use the, the guides at least half inch, right, diameter to get that three quarters of an inch. Then you mechanically go from left to right with that trowel quarter inch by quarter inch, and then you you come in with your finished mortar and you finish. Okay, just to summarize that again. We we uh we represent MTEC in, in the US in Puerto Rico in the Caribbean as well. And uh we we sell these uh we think this is the monomix mainly the monomix mix are used uh in our projects because um, they're like two two hundred and forty volts and um so they're they 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 uh they're thirty like thirty amps so that, that, that can be found in any in any uh Building, or if you don't have you don't have electricity, then you need like a, a ten kilowatt, uh, let's say, a plant or generator to move it. Also, you need uh, at least forty pounds of water uh, to uh, operate this uh, this machine. So this machine, what you do is you put the uh, the, the bags over, and it, and, it, and it has a a cutting edge uh, on the top, and and it'll open the the, the bag and uh, then it will mix it in in, in here, uh, and while while it turns, it, it goes through the sleeve, which also has a rotor in there as well, and and then we'll we'll join that to a uh, thirty-two foot hose, 
and then you have a, a gun on the front which will spray the uh, the mortar okay and then the dual mix we usually use it with silos of bigger buildings uh but it's very very efficient but but again this is a a three phase uh uh three phase uh let's say uh uh, electric uh, uh, machines, so it's 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 hard, it's hard to get those the three phases, but then you need a bigger generator to move it as well. Okay. But again, we we either we we sell these, and uh, so you can call us for 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 prices, and we will quote you on on those machines as well. And our products are designed to to work with this uh, machine. And again, you don't have piles of sand piles of of uh, of uh cement you know laying around uh you know because you all you just need is just these bags and then we we have designed them uh with, with let's say fiber and admixtures that will, will help you with uh finish these uh these uh these projects faster so so imagine you can do 300 bags in a day at, at a at an inch and a half let's say so your productivity will, will be very, very fast. Here we're showing you that uh, on the roof, you can either it can either be flat or or let's say uh, with a float. And uh, wherever you have a flat roof, uh, you know, by code, you every every foot you need to go up by at least a quarter inch. Okay, so so that means that at the edge you have minimum two inches, and at the center, you'll probably have five five inches of, of concrete right so you have a a slopey let's say uh uh surface okay so that 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 that, that way you don't have any ponding water but if you have a very slopey uh roof then you, all you need on the top is two inches and on the bottom is two inches minimum of concrete over the steel mesh okay and again you can go over the uh, the panels again making sure that they are braced underneath right and 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 uh, and it has the proper support to go over it, or you can put you can lay wood over it uh, just to make sure you don't you don't damage it. But but again, they're they're very sturdy uh, while while you work on it. Work on it. And again, these are the way we're we're fastening. I mean, you can fasten these uh these uh if you're putting let's say a nail uh, screws uh, to to do some supporting right. You can use top guns or top screws, uh, and um, top gun screws uh, to to penetrate these uh, these walls. And again, this mortar is four thousand psi, so but we 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 don't recommend you 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 bang in, let's say uh, with with a with a let's say with a hammer and a nail. You shouldn't be doing that. You you use a drill, and 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 then put these uh, these um, these screws in. Okay, that's the way you fasten either, I mean, whatever you need to fasten to the walls or, or roof. So, again, we, we, we covered most of the, uh, let's say, the material. Uh, I think I took a little bit more time than I expected. Now, I want to show you some pro projects, but but um, I, I want to hear some questions from you guys first, um, and then we'll... we'll if we have time, we'll we'll see some of the projects we have done so far. Um, uh, right now, we're open for for any questions that that you may have. So the, the these are some of the projects we have done. Um, so you get some ideas of of projects, right? Done chilies. Uh, these walls about eighteen foot high. See there, we can they they. They joined also with Joyce that's here as well. As chilies, there's a this is the silo we were talking about with with the uh, dual mix, where you have higher buildings, then you you can use a more efficient machine as well. Then you've done industrial buildings, regular buildings like that, small ones. Uh, this is a school we're we're doing right now, um, and uh, you can see here are the panels. How they support them again, and how they they came in. So this is a, this this project is under construction right now. Uh, you can do several housing projects. With slope or no slope on it. 
Here you can see the cantilever here with, with the panels only, because that was like, like 10 foot. Sorry, I missed it. Okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, we, we had a, a six, a six point something uh, uh, earthquake here in Puerto Rico and, and no damages were done to this, this, uh, this building. And but other structures that suffered, you know, a lot of cracks and and so, so even some schools uh, came down and crumbled. But again, these 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 uh, these buildings will stand, withstand a lot, allow let's say seismic uh, movements. So yeah, they they so look like they, they look like cracks. Structures. Again, you can either do rounded as well, as well. You got that versatility to do that. Uh, nice, beautiful home there, modern. This is in Florida. See, they over here they, they use the walls with the uh, without panels, and then they use the wooden roof on top here. All right. Have you done something in the Caribbean so far? Yeah, so, what we can do again? See, see the beams on the top, and, and these are the, our our our, uh, our columns with with the same material of our panels. So you can do that as well. You, know, you got a two story building here with the panels. So this whole structure was made with 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 our panels, even the roof. Okay. Oh, beautiful here again they they wanted to do a a steel deck uh next to the to our panel building so they they joined with beams steel beams this area here it's a warehouse okay and then there's around the world they they've done so many jobs uh it's it's been it's been incredible like in, in antarctica you know to to lower the, the cold inside these buildings. I mean, you can do that as well. Look at this uh, in Colombia. This amazing uh, uh, design. Look at that with no no column in the center. That's but but it's a beautiful beautiful uh, structure designed there. I, I I like that. And or you can you go to the extremest you know area in, in Africa where it's very very hot. And then now the building is going to be very, very cool inside. So your your AC is going to run more efficient. Again, you can use these as uh, curtain walls if, as well and use steel beams and uh, also uh, to, to help out in the building. A lot depends on the design, right? There's uh, another office building. So yeah, here on, on the left, all, all this was done with just panels. So, um, so if you have any questions or in, in the future, or if you need any quote, or, or let's say you need any help with with the design of these uh, system, you can call us. Uh, Scott Miller is our technician up in uh, in Florida. He's, uh, I mean, he can, can help you out with the quote as well uh, in in the U.S. Uh, I'm Ismo Vasquez, and I'm in with the engineering team with Victor Camacho, and we can help you out with the uh, any any questions on the design as well, and also quotes as well. Um, here are our, our local phone, phone numbers, and um, uh, Victor, do you have any questions, or are we okay? We we're okay. I really we really appreciate all the people taking the time for these webinars. Sorry that we had a little bit inconvenience uh, with the internet, the slow internet. Some people couldn't connect. Um, uh, next time we're gonna make sure that nope. doesn't happen. But, Are you able uh, to hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah this no, is, no, I can hear you. Sorry. Robles, JJ Trading in Puerto Rico, Juan's brother. Okay. Hi. 
Yeah. Question nice to hear. is this video is going to be available? Yeah, yes, it's going to be available in uh, YouTube and, and in our sites as well. Okay. Yeah, because I, you know, I've been traveling the Caribbean for many years now, and I've seen, I've seen the, I mean, this, uh, this kind of stuff before, especially developed in the UK. The yeah, well, maybe, maybe not the same thing. I, I mean, I'm not an expert on this. I'm more, I'm more on the side, on the, on the side. Okay, but, good. Uh, oh, nice. I'm just nice wondering story, because. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 next question: Have you done anything out there in the on, on the islands so far? Yeah, we have done. Uh, other than Puerto Rico, we we've done work in, in St. Thomas, St. Croix, uh, yeah, yeah, other islands as well. And Vieques Culebras, that's part of Puerto Rico. But you know, right now we're doing two two homes in Vieques. Yeah. Okay. 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 No, no, I mean, I just wonder because I mean, I, I really like the concept. I mean, it's it's it's, it's amazing. And I know I, I've seen a lot of uh, stuff like this. Uh, whoever it is uh, doing stuff in like in Africa and building like millions of houses over there and stuff like that. And uh, but I, I mean, just wondering, <laughs> just learning. <laughs> that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm, good. Yeah, that's great. Great to have you. Sure. And, and and if you have any additional question or you we have a job or something that you want to do or or design, let let us know and we can help you out with that. Okay, I I I know how to contact you, so I'm okay. okay. Good. Thank you. It's, it's very nice. Okay. Any other questions that you may have for John, Ricardo, Anna? See you on the on the line there. Okay. okay. If we don't have any more questions, uh, I think we're we're good for today. Uh, I really, really appreciate your time. And uh, yes, we're going to have this recording in in Facebook and and also in in our sites and in YouTube as well. So um, so take care, and uh, I'm glad you. Uh, you stayed with us uh, the, all this time and uh, appreciate it. Uh, have a great day. Bye. -bye.